Validity and reliability are important considerations in making the process of research authentic and useful. In a previous presentation, I discussed validity in quantitative research. This particular presentation is aimed at discussing the what and how of reliability in quantitative research in social sciences. So first, let us discuss what is reliability or what do we mean by reliability in the context of quantitative studies in social sciences. Um, in a broader sense, reliability refers to the degree of consistency of a research process in terms of uniformity of results and outcomes. So generally, it is expected that the research process should lead to consistent results, should result in outcomes that are consistent and that are uniform. And so in a broader sense, a research study will be reliable if it gives consistent and uniform results across time. Then in its very specific sense, the degree or level of consistency of a research instrument or measure to produce similar results. Um, and in order to elaborate this particular point, let us think about this example. So a research instrument that is aimed at measuring the self-efficacy, for instance, self-efficacy is one of the constructs in social sciences. So a research instrument that aims at measuring the self-efficacy of a certain age group of students will have reliability if its administration to the group or, or a similar group results in similar findings each time it is administered under similar conditions. So um, a measure that uh, we categorize as self-efficacy if it is administered to, to the same group or similar group across time and it gives us persistent, consistent results, similar results, uh, we would say that this particular instrument or construct um, has a reliability in terms of measuring the particular construct that it is aimed at measuring. Now moving on further to explaining the what of reliability um, or what reliability actually is, um, we can also think in terms of the characteristics of a test. Uh, so if a test has these two main characteristics or if a measure has these two main characteristics, we would consider it as reliable. One, internal consistency. Or we can also call it homogene homogeneity. The degree to which each item across the measure instrument as to the assessment of the construct being assessed. This actually means that the, cons the, the, the instrument that we aim, that we have developed in order to measure a particular construct, such as the self-efficacy that I, that I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, if, the, if it actually measures the particular construct, um, that will actually means that, or all aspects of the particular uh, construct, that will actually mean that this particular um, instrument has internal consistency. External consistency, which is also called stability, on the other hand, is the degree to which results from a measure or instrument remain similar across different uses on similar groups. So you use the instrument once and you use it again and the results that you get are similar. That will actually reflect the external consistency of the instrument. And so 
um, an instrument or a measure that has both internal consistency and external consistency will be considered as a reliable instrument. Um, moving on further to the how question of it, the internal consistency, so how do we actually find the internal that, that a particular instrument has internal consistency? There are a number of ways in which uh, the internal consistency or the internal reliability of a research instrument could be established. And one of the ways is split half method. So what is it? Split half method actually is dividing results of items of a measure into two halves and finding correlation between the two halves. High reliability <clears throat> will be there if the correlation is strong and on the other hand, if there is um, weaker correlation between the, uh, the results of the two halves, then we will have uh, lower reliability. Examples of the, uh, of the split half method um, of finding or establishing reliability include the Coder Richardson method useful this is actually a useful method for items with binary choices so instruments that have items with binary choices such as yes or no um, are um, actually the, the reliability of such items or such instruments could be found through this particular method here the average of all possible split halves is calculated and correlations are determined generally the, the value of correlation lie between 0 and 1. Um, Kronbach's alpha is another way um, um, of finding the reliability of the research instruments and this is generally used when we have more than two responses to our items. Average of all correlations in every split half combination is calculated. Alpha's values that lies between 0 0.7 and above indicates acceptable reliability. So, internal consistency is generally measured through the split half method and there are different ways of the split half method and um, there are specific statistics that is involved that one can further explore and the, the two main uh, uh, methods used include the Coder Richardson method and the Kronbach's alpha method and both involve statistical calculations. Then the external reliability is, or external consistency, how do we find that? This is also called the stability. So there are two main methods for finding the external consistency. Um, or stability and these include the test retest method and the parallel or or alternate form method now what is the t test retest method um, in the test retest method same measures are administered to the same group of participants more than once in similar conditions so, for example, um, giving example of the self-efficacy instrument again, um, if the, the, the instrument is actually administered to the same group or to a similar group once and then over a period of time, for example, uh, let's say a week ago uh, later or a month later, the same test is administered. And if the results are the same, this will show high reliability. Then the parallel form um, method actually is that different measures with items aimed at measuring the same construct administered to the same group more than once in similar conditions. So here what happens is that uh, generally you can make more than one test so on, or more than one measures 
and administer those measures to the same groups or to similar groups and then find correlation between the results from those two, two measures. The point to note here is that the two measures should actually have items that are aimed at measuring the same construct and not something different. So stronger correlations in scores will indicate higher reliability of the measure. Although in terms of form and in terms of language, the measures might be different, a bit different, but in terms of the meaning that, that the participants will get out of those measures will be very similar. And so as a result, they are all, that is why they are called parallel form because they are almost equivalent in terms of their aim to, cons to, to actually measure a particular construct. The other way to actually um, look at and locate the reliability of a research instrument is the interrelated reliability. Now what is it? Um, here a stronger correlation between the results from measures conducted by different researchers or observers of the same uh, people. This type of uh, the interrelated reliability method is useful in observation-based studies where certain behaviors are measured and or rated and the involvement of more than one researchers or observers is uh, actually there. So although the instruments are the same, but the observers um, or the raters or the researchers who are involved in the process of data collection are different. So this is here, this is where um, this particular uh, method where the data is coming from different observers, but the con they are essentially um, uh, measuring the same construct and using the same instrument, establishing strong correlation between these uh, uh, these measures is actually important in terms of establishing reliability and this type of reliability therefore is called the interrelator reliability. This type um, uh, of reliability actually helps in reducing subjectivity or bias across observers or raters or researchers as we know that different researchers, data collectors or observers can have certain subjectivity when they are collecting data. So this making sure that the, uh, that the particular instrument has inter-rater reliability will actually aid to the overall reliability of the research process and outcomes. Thank you for your time. Take care. Bye.